and yes we are live good afternoon everyone i welcome you once again to the seminar on convergence of ai dh and english studies uh so this scholarly session uh, the the address will be delivered by dr racha shrishti ma'am she will be joining us virtually uh, and uh, uh the chair the gracing the chair for the session will be pr uh, principal dr sunita nimavat ma'am uh to formally introduce uh, uh dr sunita ma'am uh to the participants ma'am is currently serving as the principal of government arts college walbipur gujarat and is committed to offer her abilities and skills in nurturing innovative ideas ethics and concepts with her dedicated academic skills she has tutored uh, and guided students at various academic levels while also skillfully managing a notable range of administrative roles and duties whether it is uh, delivering an expert talk or uh, skillfully handling uh, administrative duties and roles um, as an uh, as an external evaluator at examinations in universities like paou hngu or lok bharti university ma'am has contributed valuably to uh, the state academics uh, and on this note uh, i invite uh, sunita nimavat ma'am to formally introduce our uh, third speaker for the day thank you ma'am good afternoon everybody welcome ma'am uh the first sentence that i would say is wake up seed uh not seed because generally post uh, lunch session is something where people would be uh, dizzy or feel like sleepy but let us say let us sow the seeds of uh, some new concepts and ideas in the upcoming session now we have with us on screen uh dr richa shrishti it's a privilege to introduce her she is the head of department of languages at christ college uh, pune lavasa campus uh, dr shrishti leads a team of dedicated and qualified faculty members who are committed to providing quality education and research in the field of linguistics and languages she has also been working in the higher education industry for over 5 or 6 years starting as an assistant professor at gd goenka university and then becoming an associate professor at christ college since uh, 2021 her core competitor competencies include lecturing uh, tutoring curriculum development research teaching and higher education she has an mphil and phd in linguistics from jawaharlal nehru university new delhi india where i uh, specialized in uh, chomaksyan syntax interface and the psychoanalytical aspects of language she has published multiple papers in reputed journals and books exploring topics such as digital humanities gender cinema psychoanalysis theoretical linguistics nlp and elt her objective is to advance the understanding and appreciation of dh literature and language among students scholars and the wide community to add one more thing she has been instrumental in starting the first ma english with dh program in all over india so she was the first to uh, do that uh, welcome ma'am stage is all yours instead of that i would say screen is all yours welcome thank you ma'am thank you sunita ma'am am i audible yes ma'am you, yes, ma you, yes, ma you are on you are on you are on yes ma'am you are audible okay thank you um, <laughs> hello hello 
Shall I start? Uh, you can give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And as uh, Sunita ma'am said, that post lunch sessions, post lunch sessions are actually uh, mentally very boring for all of us, I think. But I'll try my best to interact with you on a topic uh, which is personally I'm very uh, close to this topic, which is AI and authorship and rethinking authorship. As in the morning, uh, Richa ma'am and uh, Nigam sir has already reiterated the fact that we have to redesign our thinking. Okay, we have to redefine some concepts. So on the basis of that, I would like to start today's session. I would also like to interact with all of you. So whatever questions you have already posed, I try to uh, inculcate in my uh, sessions. But whatever is left, we will at the end of it, we will um, address it. OK, so uh, why I thought this uh, topic is interesting because AI has actually evolved and it has made its way into all the fields and we will be talking about creative field today. So we'll try to explore the relationship by asking few questions. Most of my slides will be actually question based. So uh, to make it inter uh, interactive, I did that. And because I have been asking a question, I am a creative writer myself. I am an author myself, poet myself. So we'll try to address the questions like, can AI be considered a true author? First one. Or if it can help us, how can AI collaboration, AI human collaboration, change the traditional concept of authorship? And also we'll talk a bit about ethical and legal implications of AI generated creative content. I think all of you must have used AI um maybe writing an article or blog but do you think that as a human you have collaborated with ai and you have created anything with its help so because i am a linguist basically i always would like to delve into uh, the etymology part of the terms and words so i'll start by um dissecting the etymology of artificial intelligence so that we can understand the very essence of artificial intelligence. So artificialis is the Latin uh, word which uh, means crafted or made with skill. And intelligentsia is actually uh, the amalgamation of inter, which means between, and legate to mean like gather or read. So basically intelligentsia means our ability to understand something. So overall, AI refers to uh, the creation of such machines, such intelligence machines that can think and act like humans. Now, moving on to another term, which is author. OK, so author has been derived from Latin author, which means originator and creator. Create actually means the uh, meaning of create is to form out of nothing. So Earlier, it was actually some nature or divine power which can create something or form something out of nothing. But the question is, what makes someone an author or creator? It is just, is it just the writing part? So you use the pen and use the paper and write it and you'll be an author. Or can there be an authorship without a human involvement? And when we are talking about authorship of creating something. This brings to us uh, the term I think Nigam sir has also used in the morning. That's creativity. We are like right, right now, it's a kind of cliched word. Everybody is using creativity and innovation. But we have to really think about creativity also. So as all of you know that this creativity is something which can not only be exhibited by us, and I was recently reading a, a few research papers that recent studies are suggesting that even plants exhibit a form of creativity. It can be different form of creativity, different than humans, but plants also exhibit some forms of uh, creativity. I was also reading an article where it suggested that the more uncomfortable a human being is, 
of it. For example, the most sad uh, uh, um, human being is that can actually boost our creativity. And uh, I think whoever writes or creates will agree to my point that, yeah, when we are uncomfortable, we actually create. But what what is creativity and how is it related to authorship? I was thinking about um, so many philosophers, authors, researchers, writers, poets, and they have everybody knows all of you. I think students uh, students of literature have read these things that some scholars have uh, said that it's a kind of problem solving solving skills. Creativity is some say that it brings us. Um, closer to nature or God. Some say that creativity is something which is the only universal truth and beauty. Some also say that creativity makes us both emotional and rational. Okay. So the point right now here is that if there is creativity in humans, we will come to AI later, is creativity something which is innate or can it be developed? Okay. What role inspiration actually plays in the creative in the creative process, both external and internal, we should say. And also, as I said, that can an act of creation uh, or by creating something, we uh, we are closer to something larger than ourselves. For example, divine or God or nature, whatever we may say. So I was thinking that if there is a robot chef, okay? Just imagine that there's a robot chef which creates a dish which is so original and we like we feel so good after eating it that uh, it wins a prize, we have given it a prize. Or there is an AI program which has generated uh, such a beautiful musical piece which is very emotionally resonant to us that uh, we gave it a Grammy, okay? Now, what are these things? These things tell us that we are into a new era of creative agency. And as humans, we have to question that in this era of unexpected creators, actually, how do we define values which actually uh, addresses creativity or which is as associated or attached to something called creativity and which we humans were very proud that only we can do it. There are some things, uh, some other values also when we are saying humans, humans feel that we are conscious, we have autonomy, we have emotion, we have intentionality, and that is what makes us apart from machines. And that is why only we have got the so-called right to create. Okay. But then uh, can we not imagine a machine that can uh, think and learn and also feel emotion and act with some kind of in intention. You'll say that I am, uh, while I'm talking this, is it like science fiction? Some people will say, or uh, I also think that, isn't it just a glimpse into our future also? Right now, machines don't have consciousness, autonomy, or emotion. But one day, it might happen that uh, they are autonomous, or they have consciousness, they are emotion like ourselves. Now, these values uh, about creativity actually brings us to something as which we think that we have, which uh, AI machines don't have. The term is imagination. And uh, everybody knows that Albert Einstein, uh, that physicist, he had um, valued imagination to be more important than knowledge because he thought that um, and we all know we agree to it also that imagination actually uh, makes us makes us human think beyond something which is in present okay it also um, uh, it also uh, brings us to experiment freely uh, remember the thought experiments by Albert Einstein now the question again is, can AI be programmed with this kind of imagination or imaginative capacity? And to move into our main uh, topic, uh, can machine be um, considered a true author? Can be a true author or not, but can be considered a true author. 
so uh, as nigam sir also pointed out in the morning that uh, now we are blurring the lines between machine uh, machine and humans okay so we have to decide now so right now when there is there are blurring boundaries between human and machine generated content it's very relevant for us to examine the role of ai uh, for us like for uh, literature and also uh, its impact on authorship there was one of the questions asked also about the future of authorship uh, at the end we'll address it or if i am able to address during the slides that also i can do so uh, this was my favorite um, uh, person ada lovelace if you have heard of her british mathematician she was also first computer programmer she had said as i quote her that the analytical engine has no pretensions whatever to originate anything it can do whatever we know how to order it to perform but as she was a person she was a visionary mathematician why because back then actually uh, machines were primarily seen as the tool for calculation but she actually recognized something more than that for machines just calculating numbers she uh, used it for programming so she was the the, uh, the first computer programmer now if you think of her time and if you think of this time right now we are witnessing a kind of machine that can not only uh, uh, calculate and complex calculations they do but also they can generate generate text formats compose music or even we will see uh, in the next few slides they can create art also so some people uh, argue that ai is uh, not original they do not possess originality in the same way humans do but uh, there are some who say that because ai can manipulate existing data and as everybody knows uh, that there was a quote uh, which i read recently data is the new oil and everybody is trying to get it okay everybody is trying to harness it actually so ai is doing what ai is doing is it's manipulating existing data or mixing existing data and concepts which can even surprise us also okay so what ai is doing is ai is actually learning it's not only just analyzing data or creating something new or original in our sense but it is also learning and showing it to us what it can do and that is what we are looking at right now um, uh, the power of generative ai and that is why uh, this power of ai of generative ai actually is revolutionizing the way we think about creativity and innovation and uh, i also remember uh, nigam sir uh, session when he said that whatever we are doing right now or whatever we are saying right now it is uh, human centric now about these concepts also i would like to say that when we define creativity we have defined it for ourselves okay for humans what is creativity now in this age of ai then we have to rethink and why we have to rethink i will try to uh, express my uh, point of view if you can see these images please uh, check um which one do you think is created by um human and which one was created by ai i am giving you a few seconds uh, like 5 6 seconds you can just keep that in mind at the end we'll see so if you have gone through this i'll i would like to move on to another image one is created by ai and one is created by human which one why why do we think if you think left one is created by human why if, if you think right one is uh, created by humans why these are just the questions we are contemplating about next uh, this painting actually uh, it was an interesting painting for me because i was looking into uh, authorship and there's a german artist mario klingman he has created an ai brain and through that he has uh, created this painting memories of passers by and you won't believe that in 2018 it was sold for 40000 euro now it again uh, uh, it again asks us some question 
it asks us the, uh, the question that um, if AI is generating art, um, does it lessen the value of human made art? Okay, what do you think? What do you think what Mario has done? Uh, he has used an AI brain, but has it lessened the value of human made art? Or he has used AI to uh, like as a new door so that artists can explore new and uh, exciting possibilities. That is up to us to decide because whatever we are saying, whatever we are doing, everything is human centric. Now, moving on from painting to uh, narrative, I would like to show you uh, two novels. One, The Road, on the left side, uh, it has been written completely by an AI. It was the first novel written by AI. And On the Road was a human uh, written, human writer has written the novel. And One, The Road was based on On the Road. Now, imagine that you are reading On the Road, written by human, and you came across some of the passages which were actually written by AI. Will you be able to, as humans, because we take pride in saying that we are very creative and uh, we are different than AI, would you be able to decipher or differentiate which passages were written by AI and which passages were written by humans? Now, I'll show you this. In a few seconds I'll give on uh, one side I have given a passage from on the road and on the other side I have given a passage from uh, one the road. Just give it a few seconds and can you differentiate which one is written by AI and which one is written by human? Just look at it if the slides are visible. Uh, later I can share it. So that at the end we can discuss and we'll see. Now, whatever your thoughts are right now, all of you will agree, at least till now, that there is a certain kind of raw emotion and uh, maybe depth of feeling that we find in human written works. Okay. Why? Because humans, when we are writing, we are creating something, we are drawing on our personal experiences and intentionality also to create something like a more nuanced narrative than uh, maybe AI. But there are some pros of AI generated text also because AI generated text will offer you, a, it offers actually a fresh perspective, a different kind of perspective and also an ability to explore vast data sets because it is so-called inspired by a huge amount of data sets. AI uh, generated text can also um, break free from our limitations, for example, stylistic limitations or biasness, human biasness or cliches. But again, the question comes that uh, can AI generated text ever truly or fully capture the soul of human written story? Um, many of you must be here, uh, must be a writer, a poet. Uh, you think about it and we will discuss it at the end now in this era and this in this context actually the concept of author takes a whole new meaning and i'll show you i'll give you a few examples and then we will see okay so these are two poems one is written completely by this human i have written it and on the other side it's completely written by ai Few lines, just read and can you decipher? That's also a kind of, some people are answering, I think. Just keep uh, uh, noting it and at the end we will do it. Okay, so if you have looked at it, I don't read line by line, but you can just skim through it. Uh, now the next one also, okay, so in this, one is completely written by AI and one is written by human and AI collaboration. Can you decide for this also? And I'll uh, show you how I did it. Because <clears throat> I'm not able to hear anything. I hope that everybody is able to go through this. 
Okay. So if you have decipered differentiated, we will move on and we'll see which one of these at least is written by human and AI. Okay. So this, this poem out of this is written by human and AI. So I can move to the previous slide and tell you that the next, the right hand side one was completely written by AI. Now, is there any difference? Do you find any difference where a human has collaborated? Like I have collaborated with AI. And on the other hand, uh, AI has written all, all by itself. We'll move on. Uh, okay, so how we did it, uh, there is a AI tool actually verse by verse, which I used for the collaboration. That's an experimental AI. Uh, I am showing you the screen, how it looks. So the first screen, when you type verse by verse AI, it will show you like this. So it helps you compose poetry where you are inspired by, it has given classic uh, American poets. Maybe one of you can uh, refine it and uh, you can make it inspired by classic Indian English poets or Indian poets or regional Indian regional uh, languages also you can do that. There are so many things that uh, the young generation needs to do. Okay, so this is the first screen. Next screen, if you if you'll move to, it will ask you to choose your muses. Like, who are your muses? Select up to three. So I selected, I think, Emily Dickinson, and uh, who else? I'll see. Uh, okay, then it will ask you to design your poem structure also, poetic form also. So you have to choose as human. You want a quatrain, you want a couplet, you want a free verse, syllable count. Also, it will ask you to choose. And rhyming scheme also, it will ask you to choose. Okay. Then you will move on to the next. I had, uh, when uh, uh, for the previous poem, I had, chose, uh, I had selected free verse. So we'll see. Okay, like this. Now, the first line uh, a human has written. So I had written the first line. Then it asks you. Continue writing or choose a suggestion. Now, on the other side, you can see uh, it has given you here is what they suggest. Okay, you can suggest, you can choose the suggestion, or you can continue on your own, or you can, if you don't like those suggestions, you can refresh also. And then to the next line, and then to the next line, for example, like this, and then at the end, you can finish. Okay, so this was something about. Uh, uh, verse okay next I would like to show you something related to prose uh, for the first time I used it actually but uh, for the sake of this uh, presentation but it was interesting where you can give it give it as plot okay it will give you few variants so I had chosen as you can see on the slide three variants there can be one variant or two variants I had uh, given it um, a topic where the utopian world, uh, humans and AI are working together for a better world. I had given it some characters and everything. The more uh, explanatory your prompts are, the better it will do. And whatever you get, you can edit it as much as you can. And then you think about this, uh, who has created it. We'll come to it later. Okay. Then um, there was another interesting uh, text-based, this is called AI Dungeon, and it is a very interesting text-based AI-powered simulation, fantasy simulation. It uses AI to generate uh, random storyline, where you as a player will submit this stimuli. It was also one of the pioneering online games, which actually shows uh, us how human and machine can collaborate. I have given a free a few screenshots i'll show it to you how does it work a bit so then you can uh, check the setting uh, select a character i had selected scientists in this and then it will give you a scenario i had uh, named that scientist also sss uh, and then you can ask us to do there are see there are few uh, options down do say or maybe story or see so if you are writing accordingly it will give you the 
game. So I had written something about zombies. Zombies are everywhere. So it was giving me a game related to zombies where everybody is uh, surrounded by zombies and there is a so solar power. Uh, the surrounding area is uh, infested with several red dots and those were kind of zombies I tried to. Now, the question here is, um, uh, I had showed you AI generated, I had showed you human generated, and also sh I have also showed you human AI generated. Now, there are some ways to know whether, some ways, whether it's by AI or by human, but as I have checked also, these are not accurate ways. So sometimes I am writing uh, the line, I have given it a paragraph and it shows that it has been written by AI. So, so I feel very bad now. No, I have written it. Um, there are, uh, uh, so we have tools actually. I have put uh, a few of the tools on the screen. They can tell you whether it's human, whether it's AI generated completely or AI plus human, but these are not accurate ways. But my question is, for this text, it was written, it, I had written a paper and it showed uh, this uh, text is 0%. It also gives you how much percentage of uh, AI contribution is there. But it's, um, my question here is, um, is this required? Why are we doing it also? Okay. And this brings uh, to, uh, at least to ask a question again, about what an author is. We are back to our first question. Now, everybody who is from literature background here, you must have read uh, Ronald Barthes, who was a prominent literary critic. And uh, he was famous because he actually argued against the traditional idea of uh, idea of traditional author as the sole source of meaning in a text. OK, so he introduced a term or the word or the concept that was that is scripta. Now, when I was reading about scripta, uh, it stuck my uh, mind that the scripta can be something uh, related to AI. I'll just show you how, then we can discuss it. So, Ronald Bass actually tells us that uh, who is this author? Author is traditionally author. It has always been. Uh, a lone genius creating a work of literature or other piece of writing by the powers of his or her own imagination. Okay. Now, earlier, what used to happen, if you remember our question papers long ago, uh, the question was asked like that, what was author's intention? Or uh, please try to find out what is author's intention. And we used to focus on what is the right answer. And our right answer actually focused on what was the, the author's intention, whom we don't know. Okay, so based on the text, we were trying to find out author's intention because that was necessary at the time. Now, Ronald Bass actually gave the term scripter when he says that scripter's only power is to combine pre-existing text in new ways. Now, just think of AI and at the back of the mind, please keep this uh, definition with you. Uh, he also says the scripter has no past, but it is born with the text. And then he says that death of the author is the birth of the reader. Now, the scripter is not an individual. So it's just a kind of uh, writing force which produces the text through combining uh, different data, means through language itself. Now, Right now, what has happened is that the text has become the site of interpretation and you, the readers, are actually uh, actively engaging. Now, my question here to all of you is, is AI and scripta now, if we are not giving it uh, authorship, is it a scripta? You can think about it and we'll discuss at the end. Okay. Now, because I talked about author and scripter, so author actually was an individual and scripter is a kind of, you can say, collaborator. So we have shifted now uh, the focus from individual to collaborator. Okay. Now, because creativity has, we have always associated creativity with uh, individual uh, genius, that lone genius of Bath. But now, AI actually compels us to reframe our thinking. And uh, there's a, an interesting book by Joe Fansler who says that there is no AI in AI, no I in AI. Now, what is the meaning of it? 
there is no AI, no I in AI. He says that that I has to be provided by us, means human. So he has focused on the power of human AI collaboration. And see, he has not said AI human collaboration, but it's human AI collaboration. Now, he uh, he says he's written that it can be a powerful tool to help us to augment our creativity and it can never replace it because humans will be providing the eye because we have imagination, intuition or emotional intelligence or, and all the other values which we uh, observe while going through creativity or imagination. Now, we will be able to set the direction, not AI. And that is why he had given strategies uh, for human AI collaboration. And he has also asked uh, human us to maximize the benefits of this partnership. And note that he says this is a kind of partnership that we have to do. Uh, there was another interesting statement by a computer scientist. So I'll show it to you because we explored human ele element in AI now. Lanier actually, Jaron Lanier is a computer scientist. He uh, says that there are ways of controlling the new technology, but first we have to stop mythologizing it. What does he mean by that? He means that we have always overhyped AI's capabilities and we'll be able to truly control it only when we will have a realistic understanding of technology. And why he says that? Because the science fiction has always painted a picture of this kind of AI, which is all powerful robot and some kind of disembodied consciousness because AI had this feature of unpredictability, flexibility and human like, okay, uh, because it's simulating us. Now, the problem is that AI is not a single technology and it's a kind of broad field which has different techniques and which is making machines to learn and do things for us. So there is no single sentient AI. And whatever AI system we right now also we have or in future also we will have, they will have their own limitation because see AI excels at uh, finding out patterns, analyzing data, automating some tasks, but there has to be a human element that we can use it for. So it can be used in various fields uh, from healthcare, finance, even creative uh, industries. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the issue is that right now there are, I think there are two schools of thought, maybe three. One school of thought thinks that it's unethical as a human to use chat GPT or uh, Gemini or other kind of generative AI tools. Okay. One school of thought thinks that no, we can use it, but we have to collaborate. So what I agree to it also, and I would like to say that right now, the uh, in this contemporary world, we have to focus on human creativity uh, and capabilities of technology rather than human creativity versus. Okay, so there is no competition between us. We have to collaborate and do things. Uh, there are when we are collaborating, there are some ethical and legal considerations. Also, we will focus on that. For example, um, that uh, painting which I showed um, created by uh, Mario and it was created by an AI. Uh, he has created a beautiful painting and he said that the partner is sophisticated AI tool because the why I'm saying partner because uh, uh, that AI tool actually helped him or her generate ideas and explore some kind of combinations which he had not thought about it. Now, the question is who owns the copyright to this co-created artwork? It was not completely by human, it was not completely by AI. Now, uh, current copyright laws actually protect original work of authorship which are created by human, but AI generated content actually poses a challenge. So we have to redefine and think about uh, adapting some changes to our copyright laws uh, because traditionally copyright has always belonged to human creators. So if AI is just assisting the human in creation, the human is likely to retain copyright. And as I'll show you in um, the next few slides, 
even uh, the court wants the human to have the copyright, not AI. But the question is if AI becomes more sophisticated and the line between human input and machine contribution actually blurs, then what will happen? Can there be a concept, valid concept of co-authorship? For example, right now humans have this concept because when we are writing uh, research articles with some other human, then sometimes it's first author, second author, but sometimes it's also co-author because we are contributing 50-50%. Now, some uh, ethical considerations uh, I would uh, like to bring to your attention. Um, there is so many people are um, talking about privacy. So can it harm individuals? Can it harm uh, organization when we are uh, using it or our community, society, even environment that we have to keep in mind when we are using AI? Also some legal consideration because whenever we are using uh, AI, uh, we should think about what we are sharing with it. Is it sensitive or confidential information? or um, something uh, regarding citation also. So we should always use proper citations when we're using AI. And also in some context, we have some uh, approved AI tools also for specific cases that also we have to keep in mind. Now, as far as India is concerned, uh, we'll go through Indian copyright laws and we will see that it's also a, a legally gray area actually because still copyright laws in india do not safeguard any creation that is wholly generated by ai and as i was saying uh, indian copyright law also should have some provisions uh, to adapt to address the challenges which are posed by uh, ai generated content now uh, i would like to show you a uh, news item yeah aha uh -huh. So this was, I think, last year when Washington DC court actually said that AI generated art lacks copyright protection. Uh, another in another case, uh, there was a, there's a computer scientist who actually tried to make case for AI generated copyrights in US, but then um, the court said, no, they ruled out. They said that, no, it needs human creator. So if you are there, uh, it will be given to the human, not to the AI. Now, another question, uh, I think it was asked uh, by one of the participants um, before. Uh, we sometimes as humans, because we have, uh, we fear AI, okay? It has been created by the science fiction, science fiction movies. We think is uh, AI a threat to us, okay? So day before, Three or four days before, yeah, uh, yeah, a few days before, I was reading an art, uh, an interview by Salman Rushdie, and he has said that AI only poses threat to unoriginal writers. And how did he come to know? He actually um, gave some prompt to uh, AI and asked it to write in the style of Salman Rushdie, and then uh, Salman Rushdie judged it that it was not at all my style. Okay. So he said it's only a threat to unoriginal writers because uh, originality or whatever the human touch is, it can never replicate. That is his point of view. Now, coming to the impact. Now, in this context, what will the future be? For as far as I am concerned, I have mostly I'm thinking about the positive ones. And even if there is a negative one, it is up to the up to us like humans. We can uh, convert it into a positive. So uh, some of the impacts I have given here that on the literary form, uh, if you are thinking about literary forms, it has given rise to so many kinds of e literature, different genres and digital narratives. OK. So we have interactive fiction, hypertext literature, and reader is more and more participating. So you think about that scripter, and most of us are there.
to be included in that narrative okay it can also help us actually democratizing uh, publication because there are so many self publishing platforms that they pro they are providing easier access to new voices or wide variety of literary forms we can have it has also a blurred genres different genres because it allows for experimentation so poetry and code poetry and fiction some kind of interactive elements okay and because of this new forms are evolving so right now the definition of storytelling also has changed or is changing actually and because of the ai because it can automate some repetitive tasks for example if you have to check um, grammar and typos and other things which writers were all writers were earlier doing and spending their work spending their time in that it has actually increased efficiency and productivity because then the creator can actually free uh, can have free time and think about something maybe conceptual or something more innovative um before um finishing it i would like to show some other interesting uh forms okay so this was one which i came across okay there is an artist who invites you to take part in a collective poem and you have to donate words okay so each word you donate to the uh, to, uh, each word you write or you send it will generate a unique poem portrait of your face so it's a self portrait plus poem so it's a kind of poem portrait um then another one is i was going through something which will help uh, you write a haiku so first page looks like that you write your name then you go to the second screen and you are the creator so you have to write your own words and because haiku is based on syllables exact number of syllables so you will write your own words you choose your words syllables and then for example i did this i just tried and see so now tell me who is the creator this is these are all my words it's not ai words okay so i have written it with the help of um, ai uh finally there was a book uh, which is an interesting book the inevitable where kevin kelly actually says that this is not a race against machines if we race against them we lose it's a race with the machines as i said it should be and not versus okay you will be paid in the future based on how well you can work with robot robots okay so if you think that it's very unethical and i'll not work then those those humans will not survive who think like that it's inevitable so he says that let them help us they will take our jobs it doesn't mean we will be there okay so let them help us uh, draw new things for us so that we can get time to conceptualize things i think more or less um, i have uh, finished with it just few again i'll just recap a few questions which we already did but i don't know the right answer it's these are the questions which will have uh, evolving answers actually so we have explored the strengths limitations of ai and uh, we also explored uh, the uh originality part okay what are the values now it's up to you if you think whether you can provide that human touch or you are not able to provide so i think that we should move forward and in this era of co creation we should use ai to expand ourselves and move beyond something which earlier we thought was not uh, possible yet we have to keep our human spark in that okay so uh, at the end i would like to reiterate the point that our future is not in a competition between humans and machines but a collaboration to create a world where we think of something more than competition so i hope that what are whatever the questions i asked uh, this will actually guide our exploration further for ai and creativity
So am I audible? Two cents. Uh, a part of my research is also about uh, exploring the uh, like you know the implications of authorship within the era of uh, elit and AI and generative technology. So thank you so much for your insights. Uh, for uh, the for I now invite uh, feedback from uh, yeah. We'll take the first question. Okay, we'll now first take the questions from uh, the offline participants here and then uh, also from the virtual side. So the stage is open for questions. If there are people who previously asked questions when, uh, during the, like, you know, when the form was shared with you for the questions and want to address them here in person, then you can ask those questions as well. Yeah, they can ask. Though I think I have covered all those questions in my slides, but if you want to ask, we can discuss anything else. Also. Any virtual participants wishing to ask? A question? Okay, sir has a question, please. Yes, please. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. I can hear. Video is not. Yes, sir. You are on. You are on. You are audible, sir. Hello, ma'am. Ma My yes, question sir. is: uh, We have been talking about this digital humanity and artificial intelligence, and there are so many other vast possibility of this area and research it all sounds very good and fruitful and so on but my question is my fundamental question that arose in my mind is that can uh, an ai uh, create a drama like hamlet shakespeare's hamlet or lear yes sir i think uh, during my session I tried to answer this question and first uh, when you are say when you're asking me this question again I think you should have ans answered it now the thing is when you say that can it create like Hamlet so what do you mean by can it create like Hamlet what is your definition of creativity Yes, sir. No, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I could not hear. So can you repeat the question? Hello. Can ah, you yes, hear? Please. Yes, please. please. Yes. Uh, creativity, I think, is something entirely human. It cannot uh, be part of machine. Machine no. can at least aid the exterior function of uh, basically human creativity uh, so uh, i so think it is not possible for ai hello yes it's not possible for ai to create a drama like hamlet so then i think you have answered your question, question. question. Am, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are here. Yes. Yes. Oh, as I understand, as, uh, sir just talked about the greatness of Hamlet, but I understand if uh, Shakespeare would have AI, the Hamlet <laughs> would be better. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Maybe. Thank you for this comment, actually. Hello. Yeah. Madam, it was very enlightening session. I just have one question from the point of view of the commerciality. Commercial sir, please aspect do of, sir, please uh, do sit. Related, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Please sit. So what would happen in future if total AI creation comes in the uh, industry? 
because at the end of the day the common reader would be interested in reading the book rather than who has written the book so how this phenomena is going to impact the publishing industry would people be reading more ai or human ai or ai human so as i uh, this is just my point of view thank you for this question and as i uh, tried to uh, show in the slides also i feel that um, if we are if as humans we are not able to decipher between ai and human generated content then is this question valid so it depends if we are able to uh, say that it is ai and it's human it's fine but i think as uh, 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 in the morning uh, sir was saying uh, dilip sir was saying that earlier also very few people select few people used to read okay select few people used to uh, are like um, into classical music so i don't think ai will hamper those things if you will if we will have actually if we will have some human spark as i tried to show in the uh, prose also and uh, verse also i had written one complete poem uh, one was written completely by ai one i had collaborated with ai now i like my own poem okay because i have written it but if you are reading it as a reader which one you like you will produce the market so if you like human ai one better i think then publishing industry will go for that if people will go for uh, human uh, uh, created content then public will go for that so i think it, it all depends the market all depends on how we assess it so that's my point of view because i don't think there's any answer to it i hope i have answered your question sir thank you Yes, we have one more question from the audience. Yes. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, when yes. when there are coming uh, concepts like uh, copyright issues with uh, AI, like AI has generated some content, and there will be uh, some copyright uh, copyrights also for AI. Then mm -hmm. can there be legal procedures for uh, content created by AI? Like uh, there can be accountability also that uh, human can generate any information and uh, blame on AI or uh, things like that. Can it be like uh, the issues with defect? Uh, can we con uh, consider it with uh, parallelly with uh, this creative writing also? yes thank you uh, for this question uh, so a bit of it i uh, showed and um, expressed my point of view in my slides so the first question is that if it creates now it will not create on its own if that day will happen i think then we will not be here so if we are talking about ai creating something i think we have to be there and if we are there we have to think of it uh, whether we are considering it as our co author or co scripter maybe so we need to come up with some different terms in i in our copyright laws okay so it it has always been about human authorship but it has to be adapted to a kind of co authorship which um, the ai is contributing to so for example when i showed the painting the brain ai brain was something else the human brain was something different and human brain was augmented by the ai now whom do you think that is the main creator so it will all depend how we uh, interpret authorship and how will we make the laws and according to that uh, we should be able to answer this i hope a bit i have answered this question anyone else i have one question yes uh, please you have just said that uh, uh, ai cannot generate 
on his on its own because we have to give command at least and with different commands we have different results so in that human is required for giving command at least and second thing is that uh, in future perhaps it may be possible that uh, will there not be such tools in future which will decide which content is uh, written by ai and which content is uh, out of human mind so in future such tools might also come which will decide that it is ai generated because uh, uh, some words if in ai generated uh, material we can find some words would repeatedly come or some specific word would be used so in that manner also and second thing in that uh, we can find that there is no depth of emotions because while human is writing there we can find depth of emotion and in the depth of emotions we have uh, such kind of description so we can identify if it is machine generated so such selected words should be used so your question is because you have answered yourself Okay, so we had one question from the online attendees. Yes. Uh, would you please mention factors motivating learning ability of the learner with the use of generative AI in context of skill enhancement? Can you again ask the question, please? Would you? The learner with the use mm. of generative AI. Mm. Can you please repeat yes. the factors? Would you please Would you mention please? factors motivating learning ability of the learner with the mm. use of generative AI? Yeah, there have been many uh, questions and concerns regarding this. How does it affect our learning ability? Till now, there have been uh, not much experiments on this. I think if, if we will have in future, we'll. Uh, certainly know about it but i feel that um see as i pointed out earlier also the lips are also said so nigams are also said that if there is a knife it's not knife's problem that you are using it to murder or cut an apple okay so it all depends on us how we are utilizing it maybe for example if i when i showed something related to haiku a person uh, has never written haiku but using this collaborating with ai the person is able to write haiku so it means that it is effectively increasing its capability so i don't think it depends on us humans the ball is in our court that we want to be uh, stupid or we want to learn more that is my uh, point of view at least till now i hope i have answered this Shruti Shristi Kushwaha has asked a question. Can I uh, answer this? There's another question by Shristi. Yeah, please. Can yeah. I? Please. So Shristi has online asked, uh, if we are participating and being a collaborator, do you think humans as a readers would hold more responsibility and power than being collaborators? Would ideas be influenced by ideas provided by AI? That is why I said it depends on us. See, uh, I think in future there will be a blurred line between our idea and AI's idea because whatever ideas we are giving to AI, that also is somewhere or the else was given by a human. It is it is mixing and matching and uh, kinds of permutations combination that's like impossible for us okay so we should be able to hold more power but it depends on us whether we are trying to be just a collaborator or uh, just copying and pasting from ai and doing the things 
because most of us do that also. So it depends on us whether to be lazy or to be more creative in future. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, we uh, have one uh, more online uh, question from the online attendee. Yes. From uh, Miss Ayushi Sharma. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'll read. Yeah, I have it. How can AI driven processes reshape creative agency and narrative innovation different in the different epochs in the metaverse? Okay, so as uh, Nigam sir already said that metaverse is something which is a kind of hyper reality and yes it can reshape because ai driven processes are something which is augmenting our creativity so it depends on humans how creative we are the more creative we will be the more uh, power and agency we will have in any kind of uh, universe be it metaverse or in the real universe we will have some innovation over AI, but it all depends on how we use it, actually. Anyone else? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we have one question from the offline attendees. Yes. yes. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, my question is a follow-up of the Kansas question. Uh, he asked you a question that uh, can AI uh, generate something like Hamlet or King Lear, uh, for example, right? Uh, while um, those plays are the epitome of uh, what we would call uh, creative expressions, and I personally believe that as of now, uh, that is not possible. And you also gave example of the classical music, uh, for example, um, um, of Chopin or Bach or Beethoven, for that matter, that uh, AI for now, uh, is not been able to interpret uh, the classical music as uh, humans have. Um, and same goes with uh, the orchestral music. So my question is that in future, if AI is able to do all the things that it is not able to do as of now, where would we draw the line between uh, human creativity and uh, creativity by computer? We will not be able to draw the I line. I want totally yeah. your opinion on it and not an objective yeah. answer. Yeah, so <laughs> see, I don't know whether my answer is objective or not, but I don't think if AI is able to do all the things, one, uh, there will be no line between human and AI generated content, one. And second, I'd like to point out, you said Hamlet is an epitome of uh, play, uh, drama writing. You said something about Hamlet. Some people, if you go and read history, some people even uh, blame Shakespeare for uh, taking out the entire plot. His plot was not, uh, he has written it, but his plot was not original. What will you say about it then? So maybe that plot was given by AI in another universe you might have. And then that person produces Hamlet. So it can be equated to Hamlet also, I think, after some time. Anyone else? I hope I've answered. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so just to add on to ma'am's uh, answer to the last question, which he um, like, you know, addressed, um, sort of, it, it's about why are we drawing the lines? That is the first question. The thing the is, thing is uh, 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 if you say that you there, is that there is a draw line, draw draw line between you and machine why are you drawing it? That is the first question. The second question is, um, whenever it comes to generative content, we must realize that now format or structure is not our question of creativity. Uh, our question now is about the content. And if it can be done collaboratively, why not? Like, that is where, uh, like, you know, our attention should be. So if we can create, uh, create collaboratively, then what's the problem with it? The other thing is, if we look at the history of, uh, like you know, book production and such, uh, like you know, publishing industry and th such things, we will realize that every book was a collaboration between a writer and a publisher. 
so in such case we now have just one per, like you know one entity to deal with and ourselves so our task has now been made easy what are, what will we come up with it that's uh, like you know an area to explore so uh, thank you so much uh, all everyone so we have so one we more have one more uh, uh, from the from, uh, from the, the, uh, from, the from, from the attendees, from the attendees. Uh, uh, yeah yeah uh, 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 am yeah, yeah, it yeah it equals yes ask yes ask please so uh, I have written my dissertation on this uh, science fiction films and AI. So it's about that. Uh, what are the potential risks and uh, implication of manipulating AI as a depiction in films like Ex Machina or in science, uh, or we can say uh, Space Odyssey, that kind of films. So what's your thought about that? What did you say? What, what did you say? What did you put in Manipulation of AIs. See, I don't, I don't when, you are, when you are, am I echoing? Am I echoing? Hello? Yeah. Can I answer? Yes. See, uh, the potential implications are, I don't think it will hamper anything rather than our uh, philosophical uh, understanding of AI because sci-fi had always portrayed AI uh, in some kind of uh, maybe monster creature or something like that. Otherwise, I don't think there is any implication. It's like it's a kind of creativity. Fantasy has always been fantasy. So uh, that is up to the director for that. Otherwise, I don't think there is any implication rather than philosophical implication. Nothing else. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, uh, everyone who asked these questions, uh, these thought provoking questions or rather discussion uh, prompting questions. Thank you so much, ma'am, for answering them, like, you know, with so many uh, insights useful. And I hope this was a significant learning experience for all, like, you know, the online and offline attendees. I now uh, invite uh, Professor Dr. Sunita Numawat, ma'am, to share her remarks and provide a feedback of the session. Thank you, uh, Richa, ma'am. It was really uh, a good session, I would say, because uh, as initially in the morning, when Nigam sir said something about mathematics, same thing has happened with me as far as uh, these things are concerned. Of course, mathematics was also my bogey. Uh, and as he said, you know, some for some marks, he had to uh, fight a war. Uh, with mathematics and all that. I also had the same problem when I was a school uh, child. But uh, uh, maybe with the growing uh, of age or something, uh, my generation or me particularly is not very comfortable with uh, these things. And yet after post, uh, uh, you know, after lunch, uh, I could enjoy uh, what uh, you explained. So thank you so much for the uh, uh, that. Uh, yes, if we look back into her uh, speech and uh, whatever she discussed today, she started with a few questions herself. Actually, uh, you ask questions less than what she asked during her speech. So initially, she started with discussion of two words, uh, terms particularly artificials and intelligence, then author and creator. Uh, there was a reference that creativity is uh, available. Uh, so I, uh, here I would like to say, uh, even we remember that creativity is not only the, uh, you know, uh, portray of a human being. We look around uh, in nature and you would find birds, they have creativity. Uh, you know, plants, they have creativity. Of course, we are looking at creativity in a different way as far as writing is concerned, understanding is concerned, uh, thinking is concerned, and of course, putting it into onto paper. Uh, then she referred to some philosophers and, uh, of course, their ideas re regarding creativity. 
by creativity something uh, uh, one is near to divine that was uh, i think i found it very special then uh, we the students of literature have often come across certain uh, uh, incidents or rather examples that uh, people who are creative are quite closer to uh, divine uh, walter pater used to write poetry and he you know always felt that i am not somebody who is writing somebody makes me writing somebody, somebody makes me write poetry uh, of course now we are going to a very different thing and that is ai so uh, here it is not directly divine who is making us write this is something where we are talking about collaboration on one hand we have human being the writer author uh, who uh, i mean you you might be writing we are writing ma'am is writing so when she referred to this thing i think uh, it's a, a really a truthful thing that uh, when somebody is creating something he is or she is quite closer to the divine there are values attached to creativity uh, there was a list of certain uh, values that she referred to uh, it was like consciousness emotions it was interpersonality uh it doesn't have the like ai doesn't have the qualities that are showed above in the list when i said you know these things like consciousness uh, actually uh, last question was supposed to come from me madam that will i will ask at the end because uh, you all have already concluded things but there is still a question in my mind which may arise discussion so i didn't ask uh, ai doesn't have the qualities that uh, were showed uh, previously by madam then she of course referred to certain scientists and quotes by uh, albert einstein and then of course uh, there were some images very interesting uh, you know uh, observation was there between two images and uh, we were asked to uh, define whether it was uh, human created or uh, ai created or it was uh, the collaborated one uh, after that she also showed us the texts of poetry as well as uh, 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 prose but something very interesting was that where how ai help us to write something she showed us uh, on the page that you fill up some words you start with something and it it gives a structure haiku for example she uh, herself uh, showed a haiku which was uh, written by her and of course using ai so i think this is something where i find that ai is uh, beneficial yes to us uh, of course uh, uh, madam uh, whatever she tried to explain person like me could understand that is the you know most important thing uh, because as i said this is something very difficult for me uh, at the end one thing is there that uh, it is not a war between two things collaboration the word collaboration came again and again so ultimately at the end even i would i have agreed uh, till now till date i was not uh, that convinced that ai is important or ai can help us or ai can Uh, ethically of course i was thinking in a different way but today i have a bit convincing uh, i feel now that if we work together human and ai hand in hand of course can make miracles perhaps as far as creativity is concerned so thank you so much madam for uh, giving us all the details and showing us certain parts uh, uh, particularly for young students uh, these things will be very Uh, useful because they might uh, in future uh, try their hands at using ai and uh, create uh, something so thank you so much madam thanks to audience as well thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am i will now ask uh, dr dilip barat sir to felicitate uh, ruchi shrishti ma'am verbally yeah so uh, uh madam we uh, are offering the memento to the presenter so we'll display uh, the photograph of the memento on the screen and uh, this will be courier to you huh? so it will not be <laughs> the virtual image only but uh, the the real one will also be sent to you huh, within a day or so thank you uh, very much mm -hmm. for your uh, interesting session
and thanks to our chairperson uh, principal dr sunita ben nimawat also for sparing the time and uh, uh, giving her uh, valuable feedback uh, on the last uh, session uh, also thank you uh, very much thank you sir I will now hand over the mic to Ms. Kavisha Alagya for the next session. A very good afternoon, everyone. Once again, I'm here as a host. Uh, as we begin this final, and uh, I promise this is the last session, you won't actually feel bored because this is, will uh, this session will actually focus on AI uh, with reference to teaching and learning. And uh, as I can see, many of UG students are here who have now developed the ha habit of actually answering teachers' questions or teacher's thinking activity which they provide with the help of AI. So uh, you may get a very clear or uh, uh, a basic idea of how to use artificial intelligence in a very efficient manner. So uh, we begin the final session of our seminar and it is with great pleasure that we welcome Dr. Shobha Ma'am, uh, who is here with us online from Chennai, Tamil Nadu, uh, who will enlighten us with her insights on uh, AI for teaching and learning. Uh, firstly, let's extend a warm wel virtual welcome to Shobha Ma'am as she uh, has joined online and we are delighted to have you with us Ma'am today. Uh, and, and moving forward, I am pleased to announce that this session will be chaired by Professor Dr. Mansuk Gaijan sir. Uh, Dr. M. B. Gaijan, the in charge principal and head of department of English. Uh, so at Shamaldas Arts College affiliated to MK Bhavnagar University, Gujarat, has more than three decades of teaching experience. He has supervised many PhD scholars and is guide to four scholars currently. With a PhD qualification, Dr. Gaijan has authored four books and co-edited three others, focusing on Dalit literature and Indian women writers. He has published more than 82 papers in various journals and books covering a diverse topic such as women's autobiographies, transgender narratives, and the lit literature. His areas of specialization include English literature, Indian writing in English, marginalized studies, gender studies, ICT, ELT, cultural studies, and film and media studies. So, sir, will be guiding us through uh, the proceedings. I invite sir to formally intro introduce our esteemed speaker, sir. Uh, good afternoon to all, and the most welcome to Madam uh, Dr. Shobha. I would like to say a few words first. A human generation learn through language store the language, uh, knowledge through language and transform this knowledge to the next generation. Language remains a very powerful tool in developing, maintaining and enriching human humanity. Up to the first, perhaps the end of the first quarter decade of the 21st century, we now uh, traditionally two language, verbal and non-verbal language. But in digital era, AI has emerged and that has given the new language, new idea, new thoughts, new thinking. How we should learn the language with the help of AI. That's a very, very useful matter for us. And with the help of AI, I think and feel and observe that a large number of people all over the world can understand, can learn, and can communicate thoughts, emotions, and idea with the selective language. So uh, in this field, uh, Dr. Sho Shova has worked a lot. I would like to introduce uh, something uh, about her academic achievement. Uh, she is a gold medalist in education. Then uh, her doctoral work is also valuable work. She is working as an associate professor uh, in uh, just uh, LC. Uh, yes, uh, National, National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research uh, uh, under the Ministry of Education, Government of India. 
any teacher or a researcher is known by his work which is acceptable by the large number i would like to share that she is the author of 11 textbook published by the cambridge university then her 12 leading papers on language teaching her knowledge and experience and expertise has welcomed andhra pradesh as well as tamil nadu not only tamil nadu but wherever she has contributed and wherever she is welcomed so madam uh, today you are welcomed here in maharaja bhavnagar maharaja krishna kumar shri ji bhavnagar university to enlighten and enrich our scholars those who are in presence and those who are uh, on online so you are welcome madam thank you very much a very good evening to all of you yes ma'am you can begin your session your discussion hello 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 uh, i hope i am visible and audible okay. um so a uh, good evening to all of you and uh, i'm very glad to be here uh, at this particular uh, you know a uh, university virtually in fact uh, professor dilip barad uh, has invited me to this particular uh, session and uh, i'm very glad that this kind of a topic is being discussed uh, artificial intelligence digital humanities and english studies a topic that is extremely uh, interesting that can be extremely fruitful for uh, many scholars so when we try and analyze these kinds of topics i think most of the research scholars the post graduate students are going to uh, benefit uh, and i'm glad that uh, you know uh, i've seen the university virtually now because uh, dilip barat uh, you know professor dilip barat used to come to anna university where i used to previously work and all his work on digitization on uh, the interactive tools the ict that he has used uh, and we used to see all the website where we can see the students uh, names and what kinds of things they have created uh, uh, regarding literature language learning and all those things so now i got to see a glimpse of your uh, students uh, sir i'm very glad that i'm able to see them virtually so i'm joining from uh, you know my home here it's a holiday for us because it's good friday and uh, you know um, yeah we can see all the students that dilip barat sir used to boast about when uh, you know all the work so kudos to you for empowering so many students and kudos to all the teachers of uh, this particular university i know that you are leading in several fronts especially when it comes to ict when it comes to digitization and even i think uh, this topic is very innovative um, you know it is kind of uh, um, i think it is a pioneering uh, step because many universities uh, i have spoken where artificial intelligence is done at the introductory level but i think uh, here we are looking at a very very advanced uh, level where artificial intelligence is also discussed in the context of uh, Uh, literature studies uh, digital humanities and english studies so uh, i am actually an associate professor of english uh, working at uh, the national institute of technical teachers training and research i was previously with anna university a state university uh, where i was uh, uh, teaching both language and literature now it is all about teacher education so there are certain interesting shifts and transformations that uh, have happened especially since uh, ai has come to the front uh, to be very frank uh, at uh, the place where i work which we usually call ni triple t r has been hosting several uh, panel discussions several programs where we have the industrialists the educators and uh, a few students who come together where we are exploring certain ideas of uh, employability um, you know uh, engineering studies uh, arts and sciences and all these areas uh, now with artificial intelligence into the uh, whole game of employability the one question that many are being uh, asked in their interviews is also why should i hire you when i have chat gpt why should i hire you when i have artificial intelligence 
right so the uh, people in the industry they were telling us how teachers need to be trained because teachers also need to know how they can exploit ai tools uh, not just in the sphere of literature but also in skilling i think a lot of questions were asked about uh, skilling um, i think uh, professor uh, nigam a very interesting lecture in the morning where he was talking about value neutrality because this is something we often forget we think that uh, technology is bad ai is bad chat gpt ruins language learning creativity but i think we forget these uh, two words called as value neutral i mean value neutrality because uh, the um, you know uh, the technology itself does not carry a good or a bad um, weightage to it but then it is all the human use so in this vast background uh, i know that we have discussed literature several tools like uh, verse uh, all these things have been discussed now i know that many of your uh, students who are sitting here undergraduate postgraduate or uh, um, research scholars are soon going to become teachers right so teaching is going to be their area and um, how they are also learning so i will focus on these particular areas um, highlighting how artificial intelligence has been transforming uh, these particular areas of teaching and learning right so i will also be touching upon certain ethical concerns towards the end because uh, uh, they have been also discussed uh, earlier by uh, some of our speakers here so i am just trying to um, share my screen here okay great okay i hope my screen is visible to all of you yes kavisha ah thanks okay ah uh, yes so i am going to uh, talk about ai for teaching and learning uh, and uh, you know we will discuss in a short while about the picture that i have put there so this is just a bit of my introduction which uh, was already said so i have my phd in english and that is where my passion for uh, language education comes from and because i work with the ministry now there are a lot of opportunities where we are looking at how the entire skilling uh, landscape has changed uh, because of the coming of ai uh, now if you see the way that we respond to ai is very important in our um, experience uh, of uh, the whole uh, gamut of options ai has to us in the form of opportunities and challenges so we know that as human beings in our evolutionary setup we have this big uh, response systems to any kind of a problem uh, you know we either uh, fly or we kind of fight so it is a flight or fight response so you can see that whenever there is a danger human beings have always tried to escape the danger since our cave days or we try to fight it and uh, evolution and survival also says that people who flee the situation who fly away from the situation they kind of survive and people who try to fight something fight any new technology fight any new ideas you know they face a different kind of a resistance so uh, even with the uh, ai i think uh, it is a similar kind of a uh, flight or a fight response that many of us are trying to show but then we should also think that uh, um, evolution has also taught us that adapting ourselves to a particular a uh, new uh, phenomenon uh, is more important and that will help us in the long run right so you know how adaptation is our forte we talk about uh, survival i mean survival of the fittest right we need to be fit in order to survive and for that we need to adapt so i don't have to uh, you know go uh, back and explain the idea of uh, evolution to you but then this is the uh, kind of a broad background which i want you to keep in mind uh, there is lot of resistance there are questions like uh, the human creativity will die or people will not use language people will not learn it the right way uh, i want you to remember this picture because slowly we will be adapting to a world where ai is going to uh, become our thought partner you know this is the world which many 
uh, industrial experts are also using AI as a thought partner, not just for students, but also for teachers. Right. Uh, now, uh, let us see how drastically, you know, technology has changed within our own experience of using it. So this is a very basic question, right? Uh, like technology has changed. All of us are carrying very sleek smartphones these days. We are not carrying those uh, uh, earlier kind of uh, uh, Nokia phones or those huge phones, right? So technology has changed uh, within our own experience. So we have experienced technology for the past 30 or uh, uh, 20, 25 to 30 years. We have experienced technology and it has changed drastically. Uh, now, if you look at this particular picture, uh, you can see that uh, the fish in this picture is kind of uh, demonstrating something which is called as uh, cannibalization. Right, you know that in the ocean, it is like uh, uh, somebody eats somebody to survive kind of a world. Now, even if you look at technology, it is like that. Or say, for example, when you have the iPhone 6s or the iPhone, you know, a later version, it comes and it replaces that particular phone completely. Nobody wants to buy an iPhone 6 now, right? You want to buy the iPhone 15, the iPhone 15 Pro, or you want to look for a higher model or the 16 which is going to come so this kind of a cannibalization is there in technology now look at the company kodak right they used to produce those films which we used to put in our cameras and take only 36 pictures but when somebody in kodak proposed the idea of a digital camera they said then what will happen to all our uh, film roles that we have produced right but then that idea was not taken and then later, uh, you know, we know that uh, uh, we know how Kodak as a company kind of died. And every uh, technology, every educational technology also sometimes faces this kind of cannibalization. Uh, another very interesting idea is uh, how technology is for all. Uh, earlier, we were talking about democratization, right? Today, technology is also getting democratized. Uh, technology is not for a select few. Everybody can use technology, right? So the view towards technology is uh, transforming. So will the view towards AI also. Because if you see, uh, you know, uh, earlier we were thinking that technology is something which is created by specialists and it is used by specialists. Now, say for example, um, if you have watched, uh, you know, several movies like the Enigma, uh, you know, the Enigma game or all those uh, movies, you would have seen the analytical engine or uh, huge machines which only specialists can operate, right? We cannot operate those machines. For example, when Charles Babbage uh, introduced uh, that kind of a huge analytical engine, only specialists were able to do that uh, or creating the code and all that. That is like the first level of technology which was available. Then we had uh, another level where now say, for example, MS Office, right? Somebody creates MS Office and all of us can use MS Office. Uh, we know how to create PPTs or words or Excel sheets and all that. So technology then became, you know, kind of democratized for everyone. But today, today technology has come to a space where it is created by everyone and it is used by everyone. So we need to understand that uh, um, Technology is different from certain fields like say for example if uh, you know we need to undergo some kind of a surgery we will never trust a common person right we will never say okay this person looks like he will have the uh, talent to operate but then you don't go and trust that person but then when it comes to technology people are asking their sons and daughters right i i know that in this particular room uh, anybody who is over 30 or 40 will always ask their younger children about how to install an app or if there is any kind of a glitch in their phone or in the laptop or something wouldn't work right the first person they reach out to is the uh, 10 year old or the 15 year old in the house because uh, uh, technology is democratized and it does not differentiate age also so uh, if you see how education itself relates to technology, uh, when the printing press was introduced earlier, if you see writing was, you know, an activity that was reserved for uh, uh, a particular few, like you would have heard about all these monks who will 
copy the manuscripts and these manuscripts will be kept very safely right uh, people will not be able to read you would have heard stories of libraries being burnt because knowledge was very exclusive at that time once the printing press came right the gutenberg printing press we know that reading and writing was also uh, taught in several schools and that became like a very common activity so what happened when typewriters were introduced right so when typewriters were introduced uh, many of our previous generation or even i remember when i was uh, uh, i think around 15 to 16 years uh, you know i went to a typing class and i wanted to learn typing also so uh, we are trying to see how the evolution in education also kind of uh, changes right with evolution in technology changes the evolution in uh, education also so now if you see all these digital technologies then we understand that uh, word processing and desktop publishing was taught so uh, previously you know before 20 years or so uh, while we were in our undergraduate courses we had the special ms office now today we um, discourage our students from adding ms office in their resumes we say ms office is like a basic skill right who would add a, a ms office in their resumes so with digital technologies you know word processing or desktop publishing many such uh, uh, you know education uh, all that came up and now you see with the development of world wide web where internet is uh, pervasive when everybody has access to internet coding and web development people are learning coding children are learning coding right so we know that uh, technology impacts education at all levels what the point i'm trying to drive here is that artificial intelligence is not something very new right uh, and uh, it is here to disrupt all kinds of teaching and learning earlier also we've had all these technologies which disrupted teaching and learning which brought transformation into teaching and learning and these are certain uh, new technologies that are going to come up and beyond that still there are going to be several other technologies which will change the future of learning so uh, this particular picture if you see uh, the you know the evolutionary stages as we usually say the final uh, picture there if you see a person who is armed with a lot of uh, digital skills uh, that kind of a person will be able to exist um, you know i i still remember this quotation which used to say technology will not replace teachers but then teachers who use technology uh, will always uh, replace uh, teachers who do not use technology i think uh, i learned it from one of uh, professor barat's session when he came to our own university there so um, most of the times uh, whatever we fear right we have so much uh, a negative attitude towards something or uh, we think that we would become redundant so in such a world we need to always remember printing press came right typewriters came digital technologies came and today we have the internet right we are talking about web 2.0 web 3.0 so these things are going to keep coming uh, this is uh, just to show you how um, you know how technology especially artificial intelligence is not very new it's been there for a long time right when uh, chat gpt was introduced people thought it was uh, it was like uh, a sea change a dramatic change a disruptor in education but then we also know that um, since the 1940s lot of work has been going on uh, like especially if you see today the most popular show on netflix everybody is watching the three body problem and you can see so much of physics and science being discussed in it and it is only because of our evolution along with technology that these kind of ideas are also uh, discussed okay so we've had natural language processing for a long time then computer vision robotics and today we are talking about uh, deep learning okay so this is something uh, you know that caught my eye recently uh, skate where the puck is going not where it has been see as teachers uh, we always uh, take a step ahead right and uh, uh, since my um, you know assuming of this particular uh, role as a teacher educator at uh, the nitrtr institution where i teach uh, i am trying to lead many many teachers making them aware of several ideas so say for example uh, on monday i'm doing a session on design thinking right uh, how design thinking for educators can enhance their pedagogical practices 
we have this TRIS model, right? So a TRIS model is used for problem solving. So these are some of the ideas that are also used in industries where most of our students uh, go and work for. So we need to be uh, very progressive. We need to focus on a very uh, advanced level of thinking. And uh, like the ice hockey champion has said, we need to skate where the puck is going. Like many of you, if you are uh, uh, avid watchers of football, you would agree with me that um, you will have to move ahead of the ball and go and you know hit the goal. Uh, so I would again like to draw an example you know, how artificial intelligence has been changing teaching and learning. So this is like a, a recent record. Uh, this is the game of pole vaulting. So there was a record height of 6.23 meter that was achieved uh, last year. And if you see uh, 6.23 meter might sound like, you know, some kind of an uh, extraordinary feat. But uh, this person, Mondo Duplantis, who did it, uh, you know, why is this very significant for us, if you ask me? Uh, now, in May 1968, right, this was the record. 4.21 meter is the record. You can actually see the background of the um, of the game. Of course, a lot of people are watching, right? And you have the referees there. Uh, look at the size of the pole. And uh, it is just a stick, right? And literally, it is hard ground surface. There is uh, no security or safety for the person. If a person is going to fall from this height, definitely somebody can break their bones. Okay, so now we have this four meter record, which was the highest. And uh, if you look at the previous picture, we have the uh, six meter record. But we know that as humans, we have not evolved too much from 1968 to 2023, right? Within that uh, 40 or 30 years uh, span, um, you know, I, I don't think uh, we have, uh, I mean, 60 years span, we have not developed any special uh, body mechanics to increase our height or to do these kind of things our body has not become elastic or you know we don't have many such uh, uh, facilities but what has actually changed is the kind of technology that person has access to right let me just show you this picture where you can see what kind of the pole the person is using right the pole the person is using is highly flexible right and this person is able to uh, kind of uh, uh, project himself uh, and throw himself off at a greater height than what the previous person was able to do. So when you compare these two pictures, right, because most of the teachers whom I have heard about uh, uh, the biggest complaint with artificial intelligence is, you know, we learned everything the hard way. We, we went to libraries and we took all our notes, we studied like this, we did all this. But then our children, you know, they simply go to chat GPT and they give their answers. So this is the kind of uh, difference that has happened in this particular game. And we will also have to consider how artificial intelligence is going to change several other dynamics also further in education. Uh, I hope some of these uh, ideas uh, uh, have been discussed since morning uh, because uh, chat GPT becomes uh, a tool for cheating and uh, with a lot of uh, AI chatbots, universities have to revamp how they teach. And, uh, you know, the professor was terrorized when he caught the student cheating with uh, chat GPT. And then the Harvard Independent said uh, how chat GPT, um, you know, uh, brings the depth of education. Uh, but then these are all certain things that uh, uh, have made us rethink about our own, uh, you know, educational uh, uh, practices okay uh, now this if you see uh, any uh, educator uh, should be able to identify him very easily so i'm showing a picture and if you see uh, this is the clue for the picture so um, any clue uh, who this person is any clue who this person is okay since we are in an online mode where i'm not able to uh, hear you. Uh, I know that many of you are telling uh, this particular name, Benjamin S. Bloom, and that was the uh, Bloom's taxonomy, right? So any teacher, any educator would have undergone this kind of a practice. Uh, uh, though we are teaching literature uh, and language, we know that all our question papers for NAC and NBA, uh, we work on this kind of a framework, right? 
you know, basic is remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So this particular person is Benjamin S. Bloom. Uh, any clue who this person is? Any clue who this person is? So this person is the most famous Sal Khan or Salman Khan who uh, founded the Khan Academy. Now all of us know that Khan Academy is kind of uh, one of the premier, uh, um, you know, a virtual uh, institution where people are learning things right from class one to you know they call it the k-12 so in the k-12 model uh, we have salman khan uh, sal khan uh, as a big name who has brought so many changes and transformations so we know that uh, um, you know uh, when learning moves to the virtual uh, place there are going to be a lot of transformations uh, now, this is another phase most of you must be familiar with by now, right? He has appeared on several interviews um, and one of the persons, one of the reasons, uh, you know, uh, for this entire seminar or webinar uh, taking place. So we have Benjamin S. Bloom, we have Sal Khan, and then we have OpenAI CEO who is Sam Altman. So you must be wondering why I am showing a uh, kind of, you know, Benjamin S. Bloom, uh, who is, uh, uh, you know, the founder of uh, Bloom's Taxonomy, which is followed by several of us, um, whether we are creating a question paper, whether we are doing any kind of, um, you know, corrections uh, and all that. Then we also have Salman Khan and then we also have Sam Altman. So all three are educators and uh, all three have contributed a lot uh, you know let us see what actually connects them uh, there are you know um, there is something that actually connects them and let us see what actually connects them okay so um, we know um, bloom benjamin has bloom for his bloom's taxonomy but then he also worked on some other problem which is called as the two sigma problem now what was he doing he was actually searching for an ideal method um, for you know which works better in a class whether it is group instruction or it is going to be one-to-one -one tutoring which is going to work better so if you see in the conventional model he said one teacher is to 30 students is going to work well mastery learning one student to 30 where you uh, apply mastery learning which is like you master a concept completely and then you move to the next concept which is applied in Khan Academy and then Sam Altman comes and he alters the way education happens by offering one-to-one -one tutorial right even the questions that you have asked I saw how personalized the tutoring adaptive learning these are the two words that comes to teaching and learning especially using AI tools so these three curves actually represent the ideas that these three people have discussed about and I'm showing you um, a clipping from 1984 right this is coming from 1984 which Benjamin S. Bloom was trying to understand how these things happen so if you see the learning outcome by the method uh, so we know that uh, if it is a class of 1 is to 30 where there is one teacher for every 30 student which is also a very ideal situation in India we have larger classes and the performance is lesser mastery learning the orange line the performance is slightly higher and then we have the one is to one level. So uh, artificial intelligence can actually bring the power of personalized learning and the achievement scores can also improve, right? There are many studies which are being done now, especially in the field of education, uh, language education also. So we have these three people who have proposed to us these ideas. right? Whether you're learning literature, whether you're learning mathematics, whether you're learning history, right they have provided a kind of a framework with which all learning can be made highly effective so uh, this is like artificial intelligence in today's classroom uh, where we have artificial intelligence which is trying to explain to students uh, which is used to teach and then it can also help us code things so coding is a very big uh, area in which artificial intelligence has brought in a lot of changes uh, and then we also have uh, uh, AI explaining things to students like this is how it looks by visualizing it. And then AI can also give us feedback, 
right uh, from the morning we have been discussing how so many things can be generated using ai but i would also like to touch upon the point how feedback can also be given uh, using ai right uh, now uh, look at the teacher who is standing right so all of us are aiming to be teachers in future so we have this teacher who is uh, standing in the corner of the room uh, and we have to rethink the role of the teacher uh, with ai uh, in today's classroom now i'm not going to talk much about the teacher's role uh, i think it is for you to uh, think about uh, let me just focus on the power of ai in the classroom because uh, the classroom is the venue where all the teaching and learning happens uh, i strongly believe that ai does not detract from the classroom instruction but enhances it in many ways i'm sure that uh, uh, Professor Bharat would have discussed with you how there are several ways in which you can uh, employ AI to, uh, you know, uh, to enhance whether it is your language or your literature reading skills, uh, literature based writing skills, right? So there is a general, uh, uh, you know, a fear uh, about uh, how uh, it will kind of uh, water down, it will kind of make redundant classroom instruction, but then it does not detract, but it always enhances. And it has also brought a massive impact in education because it is not a threat to teachers and it is not there to replace teachers, but rather to deliver a better education to our children, right? So uh, what I personally feel is, you know, we should focus on a future hybrid model. Because uh, like we saw how education has been disrupted by typewriters or computers. Morning, uh, Nigam sir was giving the example of a calculator, right? How mathematics people thought that a calculator will always, you know, uh, create a lot of chaos in a classroom. But then today it has become inevitable, right? So it has to become a future hybrid model that is designed to get the best out of our artificially intelligent enabled systems and our teachers. So it has to be a model where all three of us are working together uh, because uh, like you have asked in the questions also, you know, how can uh, some of you have asked, uh, how can it impact teaching and learning in a positive way? What are the benefits? Now, it brings in a lot of differentiated and individualized learning. Now, as language learners, you must be focused about uh, as literature students uh, also, we know that. Uh, language learners are always categorized uh, as, uh, you know, A1, A2, B1, B2, and C1, C2 levels according to the CEFR levels, right? The Council of European Framework of Reference, whether you're doing your IELTS exam, you're taking your TOEFL exam, all these language-based, your GMAT, right? All these uh, language-based exams, if you see, uh, they expect a kind of a standard. But we, uh, in our colleges, we do not do streaming, right? Uh, because we think that streaming can bring in other problems. When I'm talking about streaming, I am talking about, uh, you know, we don't streamline our students as uh, you, all of you belong to um, a lower category. You people have a very higher level of language skills. So you belong to a B category and C category. So we cannot do that. But inside the classroom, we can prepare a lot of content uh, which uh, can be differentiated, uh, which can be individualized also. When I was introduced, uh, you know, uh, I was introduced as the author of 11 books uh, with uh, Cambridge for different universities. Uh, in fact, I'm currently working on one for uh, uh, Punjab, uh, you know, uh, State Educational Board and previously with Gohati University. And of course, in Tamil Nadu, I have written some seven or eight books for including Andhra Pradesh and other neighboring states as well. Uh, as a content developer, we always have to think about what our students really need. Uh, say, for example, if I'm going to teach a poem to you, right? Um, so I will have to think about what will be the best way in which the vocabulary of the poem can be recycled. How can I uh, add critical thinking and analytical skills for students, right? Problem solving. I think the previous speaker also touched on problem solving and critical thinking. So when I have to uh, modify everything for my audience, so we work on these textbooks in a, in a very, very, uh, very comprehensive manner, right? With the coming of AI, most of these things have become, um, I wouldn't say easy, but then they have become more comprehensive. Now there are so many choices that we can explore. So we can create student uh, exercises 
for different levels of students in a very differentiated and individualized manner. And AI has also brought the automation of administrative tasks most of the time, right? Uh, there is a special area coming up uh, where you can talk about uh, learning analytics and how AI can be helpful. Now, say, for example, you have all your students' marks, right? What kind of perspectives uh, do you need uh, based on the marks of your students? How can you change your teaching? So all these uh, inputs also can be given by AI. And what is the tutoring and support that the students need outside the classroom? And also universal access for all the students. So it is not like only a few students can access AI, all students can access. So these are certain ideas which you know uh, we should uh, think about. And then uh, there are some basic questions that I would ask. Uh, are we talking about teaching AI or teaching with AI? Because many teachers, you know, who come to our uh, teacher educator programs, uh, they come for, for different kind of training and research purposes to our institution. There was one person who came from an interior of Tamil Nadu, uh, and he was telling me, like, when I was uh, ask, when I was giving him several tools to create uh, content and to teach in the classroom, uh, he was telling me that uh, he has to keep all this as a secret from his students, or his students will find out. Right. So I told him maybe we shouldn't be doing that because the students might already know Right? they are much more advanced. No, no. Uh, you know, our, our college is in a rural setup. So many of my students will not know. Uh, so are we going to because we're talking about democratization of technology here. So are we going to make it difficult for our students uh, from uh, uh, using artificial intelligence? And what does it mean to teach with artificial intelligence, right? So there are these basic questions that you will have to ask. Now, if you ask me, more than colleges in schools, it has emerged as a vital component, right? Uh, a few years ago, I was also working with the electronic skill sectors of India, where they wanted to create content, uh, ESP, you know, English for specific purposes, using AR, VR, drone technology, because you know that uh, India is rapidly transforming itself in the field of uh, digitization, whether it is UPI, whether it is, you know, uh, the DigiLocker. So, so many things are being done in India today. And uh, in schools, uh, they are preparing students for the future. And these kind of uh, ideas are also discussed. In fact, there is an entire uh, uh, program on AR and VR for uh, the teaching and learning of the English language. Okay. So, uh, we are also talking about uh, 21st century skills here, which prepares them for the digital age as well. So we know that AI education, it goes beyond technical proficiency and it nurtures a lot of critical thinking abilities, right? So they also learn to evaluate the ethical uh, implications of AI technologies. We have to teach our students also about the uh, ethical implications and you know how they will be able to use it in their future uh, endeavors. Now, if you see at a very elementary level, students are using AI for their social media posts. Right, for their Instagram posts. Uh, so they are generating things like, uh, uh, you know, how they, uh, whether it is travel or whether it is party or anything, they want to uh, develop a lot of content and then they are uh, generating it using AI tools for Instagram, for Snapchat. And today, the fight among smartphones is um, which has the better AI model, right? So uh, recently, I wanted to buy a smartphone and we were considering. Uh, uh, the iPhone, the, Sam, the Samsung Ultra, and then the Google Pixel. Uh, and then, you know, uh, some of my students were telling me, like, uh, today it is not about the camera or the battery or, you know, all these features because those features are best. It is more about AI, right? So I think you should go for this particular phone because it has a great AI feature. And even if you look at the advertisements, earlier the focus used to be on the camera or the battery life or, you know, different things. But today the focus is more on the AI features of the phone. So uh, some phones have this magic response uh, uh, assistant, right? So when I look at my phone and if there is any kind of a message, I don't have to type the message at all because so many suggestions are coming. Uh, now, say, for example, if Bharat sir was going to remind me saying, uh, well, Madam, you should join at 440. I mean, you should join at 340. 
uh, you know, so that we can start the session. So I don't even have to type sure or I will do that because the suggestions are already there and I just have to click the suggestion, right? So we are moving towards this world where we are talking about comfort, conveni convenience and uh, correctness, right? So because you know that when you generate an email from uh, uh, ChatGPT or from Claude or from Gemini, um, it kind of, uh, that, is, that is not much of language errors when you are generating resumes for your LinkedIn, you do not want to uh, kind of lose out because most companies are checking your LinkedIn accounts uh, before they kind of employ you. So uh, there are different, uh, you know, uh, areas in which we can talk about uh, AI. So if you see, uh, these are some teacher training programs that have been done, uh, how teachers are avidly, and these are school teachers, they want to learn AI. They want to see how AI can be uh, implemented in the classroom. And uh, some schools have these kind of uh, labs where uh, they are uh, coding. They are creating a lot of uh, uh, tools for AI. And you know this is called an AI-enabled classroom. And the uh, curriculum is also changing. So at uh, NITRTR, where I work, we focus a lot on content design and curriculum. So AI is also changing curriculum because when we talk about uh, English studies we are also talking about English language teaching and I also saw a few comments on the YouTube where uh, you know there were uh, uh, kind of comments about uh, um, how can we use it for ELD how can language development happen because in a country like India where we have a vast majority of learners in uh, uh, with English as the second language there is the need to upskill uh, you know English language also because most of you who are now uh, students of literature will soon be teaching classrooms where you will be teaching students of mathematics, you will be teaching students of uh, BTEC, uh, you know, uh, you will be teaching uh, BCom and all those students where the curriculum will be different, but how you can uh, focus on language education for them. So a lot of teacher training programs are also happening. So if you see, we have this uh, ICSC robotics and AI curriculum. We have the CBSC AI and coding curriculum, right? So there are a lot of uh, um, advancements uh, when we are talking about machine learning, neural networks, computer vision, and natural language processing, as I mentioned earlier. So students have started to learn about uh, AI applications in daily life. And then later, they try to understand algorithm and coding in AI as well. So if you see, as uh, a teacher educator, I have been exploring a few courses that are being offered. And uh, many of them have enrolled. Now, if you see this course, right, it is called AI for Teachers, Artificial Intelligence Education for Teachers. And it is uh, being taught in 19 languages, OK? And uh, 15,000, I mean, 16, around 16,000 people have already enrolled for it. And it is at the beginner level. Right. So many people have started exploring these kind of ideas and uh, they are moving towards empowering themselves. Right. Now, if you see, I have a PhD in English, but then I went on to do my master's in education because uh, I think that there is a need when you become a teacher, uh, there is a need to understand how education actually works because uh, uh, not everybody ends up in a uh, uh, university where you can teach literature you know you start some people start focusing on elt as well and elt has uh, transformed significantly with the uh, coming of artificial intelligence also so now what i would do is i would talk about a lot of tools uh, because uh, uh, in one of the questions that i received uh, i think uh, the research scholars and the other professors they were curious about what are the tools and resources that I can use as a teacher or a researcher, right? Uh, you can, if you are going to create a presentation, which we do all the time, if you are going to create a worksheet, if you are going to create an activity for your classroom or an assessment or an infographic, even if you are going to create a video, there are several AI tools that you can use, okay? You can create any number of resources that you want. So most of the times, you know, the moment we get the chat GPT response for any of our questions, I know that we have moved from a time where we were wowed by the chat GPT response, right? We were thinking, oh, this is a great response. But today we are thinking like, oh, the language is very repetitive. 
you know the structure of the language is not good i'm not very happy with the response that chat gpt has given me now i'm just using chat gpt as a, a name but then it can be any other tool it can be claude it can be gemini uh, it can be your uh, microsoft copilot any tool can do that but then we do not use it like that right uh, we do not uh, kind of cut and paste it we try and think about what can you know how can i make it uh, kind of uh, better so if you see if you ask me how many ai tools are there for teaching now right uh, you will be uh, kind of shocked by the number of the tools that are existing because uh, you know earlier if you see when i was preparing for uh, uh, ai tools for teachers the number used to be less okay then after some time the number will increase when i am trying to uh, include more tools and if you see the number kept increasing okay so i cannot tell you that there are only this many tools for teachers but then there are many many tools for teachers so there are some amazing uh, tools for teachers which you can you know kind of work on because even if you are a, a literature student when you are creating content for your uh, classroom uh, now say for example thomas kids spanish tragedy is a very staple play if you take british drama if you take uh, any english literature paper at the ug level right or any of shakespeare's play so assignments today projects based learning is more uh, in vogue when it comes to project based learning you can also create videos based on those right uh, i know that uh, uh, your university will have a huge archive of learner generated uh, content so if you see uh, we can also work on these kind of things just now there was a question whether ai can write a play like hamlet uh, so you know a very interesting question i should say but then we can generate lot of videos right we can generate lot of videos based on the play based on the script and for that you can use this particular tool called as pictorial and then you also have this particular tool called as in video ai uh, i'm sorry that i can only give you the names and the uh, screens uh, you know of the uh, tools uh, if this was a face to face session uh, held in a lab we all can play with these tools and uh, create so many things okay um, of course if you are going to check for a presentation you can always check uh, this particular app which is called as tom uh, now they can give you some ideas they can give you some ideas on how the presentation can be so that you don't leave out on any vital ideas right they can give you a template on how people are doing these things you don't have to directly download and use them but you can like i mentioned earlier it can be your thought partner okay so you also have this tool called slide ai using which you can create lot of presentations very easily these days of course some of you must also be using uh, gamma so uh, with lot of enthusiasm when you create these kind of ppts you will try and understand that uh, you know uh, the ideas you will have to provide because uh, uh, like someone just mentioned uh, Uh, without i there is no ai so you are going to be the most important person now if you are a new teacher right if you are if you are a new teacher and uh, if you are planning a lesson okay you can plan a lesson on william wordsworth uh, daffodils you can plan a lesson on bernard shaw's play it can be anything but if you want to know how that lesson can be perfectly planned and delivered i think ai can serve as a great tool okay so you have this edu aid ai of an excellent uh, uh, kind of a tool where you can develop your lessons uh, so this is the screen and you know uh, if you just uh, uh, check this out uh, you will be able to create amazing le lesson plans so this is a specially powered tool for english teachers because uh, these days like i told you in an interview you can also be asked about you know how much of technology will you use can you maintain a paperless office okay so um, now you can see how there are several other tools that can also be used uh, there is also this magic school ai with lot of magic tools in it you can see it can generate a rubric now many teachers they struggle with generating rubrics right with designing rubrics but with artificial intelligence uh, teaching especially you know it has become easy uh, and uh, not only that many many tools are mushrooming day by day it is not like uh, only these tools are available tomorrow if you check there will be some more tools also
Now, perplexity, again, you can use it for lesson planning if you want to create a good lesson uh, as a teacher, as a new teacher, when you want to try and do it. Or if some of you are researching on ELT, right? Or if you want to write a paper on lesson planning, you can explore these things and you can write an excellent paper. So there is this query pod. Okay, now what query pod does it? It gives you a lot of uh, class resources in an instant where you can uh, teach anything. You can uh, kind of... Uh, uh, give a seminar on any topic, whether it is uh, um, like, you know, Indian writing or American literature or all those things also. So this is like QRipod where you are going to create your lesson. And then you have something called as auto classmate also. So this is also, uh, you know, uh, it also carries a lot of AI tools which help us to learn. Now, like I told you, uh, students who are working on uh, GMAT exam, um, you know, vocabulary where they'll have to strengthen a lot of flashcards they can create and today we have this very good tool called as Visdolia which can help us to create several uh, other uh, you know tools also then uh, now this is something very interesting because uh, neurodivergent learners um, are also part of any classroom right but if you see uh, the learners will not accept that they are neurodivergent nor will their parents but the struggle is always with the teacher and the teacher identifies people who have some difficulty in learning. Uh, but then you have to, you know, kind of manage. You cannot take it to the principal or you cannot take it to the parent because they will not agree. But then AI has brought a lot of tools, especially for special education and for addressing the requirements of neurodivergent le uh, learners in your classrooms. So Goblin Tools is one, uh, uh, you know, AI uh, uh, tool where you can kind of uh, explore. And if it is going to be for assessments, if you want to create very interesting assessments, you have something called as Diffit. Okay. Uh, I will quickly uh, kind of, uh, you know, run through this 20 users of ChatGPT. Uh, I know that my time is limited and uh, it's been a long day for you. I know that you can, you already know and you have tried. Uh, like uh, creating essential questions. You can also develop uh, uh, individualized education program goals if there are some uh, students who need it. You can also find and create templates, like, you know, whether you want to create a syllabi or a rubric, you can find and create a lot of template. You can also differentiate instructions. Now, that is very interesting. You can also provide student feedback. Okay, You can provide student feedback by... Uh, giving the students response and asking what needs to be improved here. Uh, creating vocabulary lists according to a given lesson. Okay. Now, say, for example, if I say my learners are at the A2 level and I'm going to teach this extract from uh, any kind of an author like Chekhov or you know, Tolstoy. Um, so identify the words which are of higher level and create a glossary and create a vocabulary list, right? AI will be able to do it very easily, whether it's identifying similes or metaphors, alliteration, poetic devices for teaching, it can be very useful. It can generate all kind of uh, administrative things. Of course, translation is a great, uh, um, you know, boon, I, I should say, uh, along with AI, we can do that. We can also provide multiple writing prompts. Now, I once generated for an email writing assignment 50 questions. All 50 questions were different. So students submitted assignments on different uh, topics of the email. Now, that is also possible. Of course, it can also work on, you know, math, science. Uh, it can also work on history. It can also give you a lot of uh, ideas to conduct quiz and assessment because we're talking about learner autonomy these days, right? And learner autonomy, I know that uh, um, quizzes and assessments are a part of it. So you can also provide so many things, uh, especially uh, now icebreakers in a classroom are very important. So you can generate a lot of icebreakers if you are going to teach in a classroom. Uh, you can also create an outline for meetings. Now, that is very interesting. You know, if you give the agenda, if you give who are all going to attend the meeting and what is the aim of the meeting, what is the expected outcome of the meeting, it will actually give you an outline. Uh, so today, most of us are using Otter AI uh, if we have uh, missed the meeting or if we need the summary of the meeting. 
right so uh, you can also create an on, uh, an outline for a new course that you are planning to offer you can also create a checklist now all the students and the scholars here are soon going to become teachers so you can actually create a kind of a checklist for the first day of the school of course uh, you will have to focus on all these things you will have to focus on the background use words or phrases uh, you can tell it to be either funny or very serious if you are doing an icebreaker you can be funny you should always specify the age of the students as well now apart from it there are several ai apps and tools for education that keep propping up every day so you know uh, i want you to explore uh, if you want if you are really interested uh, i would just touch upon the ethical questions uh, before i kind of um, you know close of course we've already spoken about uh, bias privacy and automation uh, sometimes you know there is something called as compensation of labor so if somebody is going to do all our work and are we paying it okay so there is something uh, so judicially if you see that question has come up and then how do you balance innovation and regulation i think many research scholars are now kind of thinking will it be plagiarism if i use ai generated content it will definitely it is definitely plagiarism if you are directly because if you see um, many of us like you know uh, inadvertently we are excited we feel like a child in the candy shop when we use these kind of tools but then we also have to remember though the regulations are not very strict today in india i'm sure that they will become strict in the future right so we need to be very very careful and we need to be very responsible in whatever we are uh, doing and then there is also industry accountability so who is responsible is the person who developed the ai responsible is sam altman responsible for students using chat gpt for homework right or should there be transparency like should teachers give homework in such a way that students can still use chat gpt but come up with different kind of answers so how much of personalization is needed because i was teaching email writing in a class and one one of my students he stood up and he asked uh, madam you are teaching us email writing but i am going to use chat gpt to write emails why should i attend your class right so why why is this uh, relevant for me but then i was uh, you know i told him today's assignment is you are going to write an introduction uh, mail about yourself to me so if it is going to be an introductory mail the student actually has to sit and uh, uh, tell things which the student wants to highlight to me right the student cannot ask ai to talk about him you cannot just put in a resume and send a mail to a teacher so that is how we need to personalize assignments also so we also talk about uh, you know content moderation policies and governance there is also one question about uh, you know ai for all that is why i focused on the democratization of uh, technology uh, of course there are a lot of uh, disinformation or misinformation you know uh, and today we are also talking about tech addiction and well being so already we are a generation who are suffering from infobesity right information obesity Uh, we know that as indians uh, uh, our obesity rates are slightly you know uh, higher and we are now suffering from infobesity also so tech addiction and well being is becoming a problem in the age of uh, ai and then role in polarization and extremism is also happening okay so these are all certain issues that we should uh, think about and uh, you know with all these things uh, i know that we will be moving in the right direction and uh, yeah so that is the end of the presentation it's been a long day for you you've been a lovely audience uh, i know that many of you uh, as students and research scholars uh, have benefited immensely from the sessions from the morning uh, i have been part of all the sessions and i was listening to the lectures and made notes etc i think uh, professor dilip bharat has laid out a proper uh, menu uh, you know starting with the uh, value neutrality which is a key topic when it comes to ai and then uh, we also moved on to digital humanities which is like one of the hot topics um, in uh, and how ai can change it for you and of course just now we had a uh, Uh, Rishan uh, Ma'am, who was talking about uh, authorship, creativity, and all these issues. So I spoke about uh, uh, how language teaching, uh, how that can be done, whether it is planning your lesson or creating vocabulary lists. 
checklists and the tools that are available. So I hope that uh, this session was also useful for you. And uh, I thank Professor Dilip Bharat again for having me um, in his university. And uh, I hope to meet you soon, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. It was indeed a thought provoking session and thank you for enriching our understanding regarding in the intersection of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, technology and education. Now we are proceeding with the Q&A discussion. Uh, I invite the questions from the participants, attendees. Those who have posted the, their questions online, they can join us here if they are uh, present in person. And those who have previously uh, submitted their questions and wish to ask them in person, please feel free to uh, raise your hand and ask the question. Yes, we have. We have one question from Bobby. Good evening, ma'am. As you told earlier that students should, uh, should use chat GPT to find the answer of any literary work. So I want to ask you, ma'am, that how can we get, get the proof that the answer of chat GPT is correct? Because sometimes it gives the different answer each time for the same question. For example, if I search for a road gun summary, the different, uh, the second time if, uh, if I search for road gun summary, there is the different answer. Then why, ma'am, what about the authenticity of that chat GPT? Uh, I hope I'm audible now. That's an excellent uh, question. I do not know your name, but, but my appreciation for your question. Um, I know that, uh, you know, uh, chat GPT makes mistakes and there is the disclaimer right in the front page. It tells you it will make mistakes. That is where you have to get your critical thinking engines on right that is where you'll have to see whether this is correct it is better that it is not giving you authentic answers otherwise we will uh, remove our thinking hat okay every time it gives you a different answer then i think it becomes your responsibility as a learner to actually go to the original and think and pick and choose uh, whichever is correct and whichever is relevant right so i think it's a very good thing that chat is not giving us the right answers as a teacher, I'm very happy that it is not giving always the right answers. You will also have to put in some kind of hard work and uh, read and understand from different sources. You can keep it as one source. Amen. Thank, Amen. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, in a way, this will urge students to explore for more answers, to think more or beyond the what whatever is available to the student. So any more question from the participants? Any online queries we have? Yes. Ma'am, we have online question. One, you can see on the screen. Yeah, this How is using AI to analyze data and predict outcomes help identify students who may be struggling and provide support to them succeed in school college over to you ma'am yeah so this is the one I was talking about learning analytics right today called as uh, learning analytics where uh, we can try and work on the marks the grades the, how the students kind of progress uh, day by day and there are several courses there are uh, which people are learning now where uh, learning analytics has become you know data is used uh, to predict uh, what kind of outcomes the student can uh, reach within a given particular year so uh, i think uh, we should learn uh, all these learning analytics now that is a new area coming up in which many educators are training themselves so if you do learning analytics as a course with statistics and everything i think uh, uh, any teacher will be able to do this so thank you so much ma'am the second question is would you please mention factors motivating learning ability of the learner with the use of gener generation ai 
skill enhancement yeah this is a very good question because skill enhancement is something that all of us are uh, you know kind of uh, focusing on and uh, if you see generative ai is like uh, it is like a genie out of the bottle because most of the times what happens is uh, we try to uh, you know create lot of assignment questions or prompts where uh, learners will be able to find answers using their critical thinking ability so motivating learning ability of the learners now say for example if some learners are going to work in a team work in a team to find answers uh, for a given set of uh, questions uh, i think uh, that would also enhance their uh, learning ability uh use of generation generative ai is something that everybody is exploring right so um it depends on the kind of questions that are given by the teachers now that would also motivate and uh, also how generative ai is going to be used are students simply going to generate ideas and cut and paste it or are they going to um, use it to reach another level right so it depends on the hands of the teachers and the kind of questions they are going to give thank you so much, you so much. Uh, another question we have could you please tell ai tools for take surveys okay so as of now we do not have you know direct tools where you can use ai to take surveys uh, of course we know that to uh, take a survey we have several other tools whether it is survey monkey or spero or so many other tools the questions the questionnaire can be generated through ai and then you can pick and choose between the different questions and uh, then you can upload it uh, on a platform which you find easy to share whether it is google form or survey monkey or anything we don't have any more questions i think that's it from participant side so moving forward i invite uh, dr mb gaijan sir to provide his valuable feedback over to you sir first of all thanks a lot to dr shobha for your original thinking and original interpretation of ai in teaching learning process uh, very very important things you have highlighted especially uh, the key words i have noted in your uh, from your talk that is we are living in the digital era sooner or later we have to adapt it we have to accept it if we do not accept it then we cannot uh, Uh, we cannot cope up with the changing world so uh, in this changing world uh, those who accept they can adapt uh, and they can adjust with this changing society and changing world that you have remarkably uh, highlighted and then you have included the one two points that is very important for me considering all this matter uh, employability and skilling these are very important uh, words for me Uh, because after all we have to go to the people after learning or after te uh, for teaching we have to go to the market at the time its employability is there or not how it can be cultivated with the help of ai that is very significantly you have highlighted and you have also represent uh, presented uh, important pictures uh, then you have also discussed khan academy and bloom's theory and uh, views that is that remains highly useful and you have also uh, highlighted uh, ai not our rival or enemy but the great companion faithful companion if we trust they are and you have also told it, it's like a uh, gin under control when it is in the bottle when it is in the bottle so they are the tool and machine if a man is a master of using it with experience wisdom knowledge and understanding then that will remain always useful to us and the human history is also telling that whenever the any invention is coming either it is uh, any tool cogwheel right from the cogwheel to digital era a few will challenge it there are the few challenges but if we accept and adapt it then what will happen uh, it will help us a lot to harmonize society society and us you have scholarly hi highlighted and discussed how ai remain useful in language learning as well as in critical thinking develop 
de development, especially for literature learning. Both, are, both have the equal importance. I would like to inform you that everybody of us are a learner. Everybody of us. Learning has no limit at age. And we are also simultaneously teacher. Suppose we have to teach somebody, not by profession, but we have to teach our brother, sister, sometime our friend. No, this is not good. This is that, that. At that time, AI remains also useful to us in day-to-day -day life. In marketplace, in commerce, and worldwide, everywhere it remains useful. Last, uh, you have also presented various tools are very useful to us. Uh, when you have digital era and uh, AI, when we are talking about AI and digital humanity, we cannot forget Dr. Barad. We are very great and we are honored by his research and contribution to the nation. We are very happy and we, we have a great honor that Dr. Barad is with us. And when you say that uh, Professor Barad in Anna University, uh, we, we don't have the word uh, when we hear it from Chennai. We are very happy, ma'am. Uh, thank you uh, for thank you for your uh, appreciation, not but I say uh, admiration and acceptance of his scholarship. Thank you very much for that. You have also highlighted how Chat GTP remains useful to us. Uh, I would like to share my opinion. A few days back, when we were traveling from Junagadh to Bhavnagar, Dr. Bharat and myself was uh, we were traveling in the same taxi, and he had, I have just asked a few questions. Uh, when we left Junagadh, uh, Junagadh is away, I think, 195 or 95 kilometers, Bharat sir. I have asked one question, and then Dr. Bharat has started talking. He had started talking, and then I was surprised. And I thought, I have at the end, I have told, I think I have gone through six, seven, or ten books, and whatever I have acquired after reading that, I learned in only one session. So we are very happy uh, to share this knowledge with uh, our participants, and we wish that uh, in future, whenever we uh, need your support. Uh, I think our student will come to uh, come in contact with you. Thank you, madam, for your uh, very original thought and interpretation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now to express our sincere gratitude, I request Professor Dr. Dilip Bharat, sir, to present a moment virtually to our esteemed speaker. Thanks a lot, uh, Shobha, madam. Uh, Good to see you with a teacher institute, a teacher training and research institute in Chennai, uh, which gives a very interesting opportunity for training for the teachers and the research also in pedagogies. Uh, so uh, we will uh, right now display a picture of a memento which we are going to offer you. Uh, it will be courier to you uh, by tonight. So you will get the real one also uh, within two, three days. Thanks a lot for your time and being with us there. Okay? Thank you. Uh, thanks to our chairperson also, uh, uh, Professor Geisen is a very the senior most English faculty with our university, and recently is also given the charge of the principal of Samal Das College. So, uh, sir, uh, sparing your time and uh, being here for your valuable feedback in the final session also. Thanks a lot to you also. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, as we approach the ending of our seminar, it gives me great pleasure to extend a warm invitation to Ms. Uh, Dr. Hari Avadehi, ma'am, uh, to anchor the, our valedictory session. Over to you, ma'am. Oh, very good evening, everyone. As we conclude this national seminar on uh, AI, DH, and English studies, I, Dr. Vaidhi Haryani, on behalf of Department of English, stand before you uh, with a profound sense of gratitude and uh, enlightenment. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you for being here. Now, before we move forward uh, to the final remarks and the thanking speech, uh, we would like to felicitate some teachers uh, who have come with their students all the way for this uh, seminar. My apologies as because we won't be able to felicitate everyone over here due to uh, constraint of time. So 
Uh, now I would request uh, uh, Sunita ma'am uh, to come and felicitate uh, Moonpara Arts College. So I would like to call uh, Vipul Dabhi and Kavisha Lagya to come and receive the certificates. Receive, we'll be receiving these two teachers. Uh, next, I would like to request uh, Dr. M. B. Gaijan, sir, to felicitate uh, the students of Log Bharti Sanosra. So, I would request uh, Bhautik Limbani, Dr. Bhautik Limbani or anyone from Lok Bharti Sanosra to come and receive the certificates. Anyone from there? Any student? No problem, sir, just a second. Uh, <clears throat> then we request uh, Dr. Vishal Pandya to receive the certificates of Government Arts College, Valpipur. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to request uh, Dr. Dilip Barrett to felicitate the uh, students and teacher uh, of uh, T.K. Parek College, Moa. I would request Surbi Goswami to come and collect the certificates. Uh, now I would request Khan sir to come and felicitate the students of uh, Rasiklal M. Dhariwala Commerce and Arts College, Vadukar. I would request Yogi Trivedi to come and receive the certificates, please. Sir. Thank you, Yogi. Uh, now I would request uh, again Dr. Dilip Bharat, sir, to come and felicitate the students of NMC uh, College, Bhavnagar. I would request Seema Rathod to come and receive the certificates. Uh, now I request again Sunita ma'am to come and do honors for the students of Gopinathji Mahila Arts College Sihor. I would like to call Archita Bagohil to get the certificates. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, Architaba. Um, all the other participants will get their certificates from the desk they have registered. And now I would request uh, Dr. Dilip Bharat to come for final remarks and thanking speech. So uh, we have kept the valedictory very simple, huh? nothing uh, else in the things. Throughout the day, we had uh, these experts speaking. Uh, there. So uh, finally, uh, 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 thanks to everybody, uh, all the students especially for your interest uh, in uh, this theme of AI, uh, digital humanities and English studies. Uh, 
your teachers might have motivated you so uh, uh, very special thanks to all these uh, uh, teachers uh, we have uh, also uh, invited them on the stage for the same uh, case uh, vipul dabi uh, kavisha uh, bautik uh, from lokbarti surbi from parek college uh, uh, yogi from dariwal uh, dariwad college uh, uh, jit uh, and uh, sima uh, from nankorba college Archita Ba from uh, this uh, Gopinathji College. So in quite a good number, uh, uh, you all have come from this uh, colleges in and around uh, Bhavnagar uh, region. So uh, thanks to uh, your teachers, to all the students also for uh, being part of this uh, 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 seminar. Uh, I'm also very thankful to the team of the organizers. Uh, here we have four research scholars who are constantly working for last so many days to see that everything is communicated properly, organized properly. Uh, Prakruti Bhatt, uh, Vaidehi Haryani, Megha Trivedi, Kavisha, they all were uh, working uh, as a core team member, as a coordinators of the entire seminar. So thanks to them for their hard work that they have done here. Uh, all the volunteer students, our MA students uh, uh, are working as a volunteer. So uh, uh, thanks to all those students who remain present. Many of them were not able to attend the session because they have to uh, take care of some desks for registration to certificate uh, distribution. So thanks to all uh, the students. Without uh, a, a good force of students, good dedicated students like we have in department, it is not possible uh, to see that we can uh, organize national level uh, seminars like, like this. Uh, a special thanks, uh, obviously, when we go for uh, 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 these things like uh, uh, seminars in hybrid mode. Uh, last time also uh, we had hybrid mode and this time again uh, we have done and we know that it is very challenging, very difficult. Uh, we have to rely a lot on whether electricity will support us or not throughout the day, whether internet will constantly work uh, with a high speed bandwidth throughout the day or not. So lots of things relies uh, on many external forces but when we have to rely on internet uh, at that time uh, what we require uh, the skill which uh, everybody of us also needs to learn is troubleshooting you never know when the problem will come from where it will come and what will be the nature of problem and at that time uh, we all go blank when suddenly the problem comes and uh, we are planning something and suddenly uh, our system starts hanging <laughs> And we never get any idea. So at that time, we require somebody who can very quickly troubleshoot everything. So for that, we have uh, one Mr. Ronak with us. Uh, Ronak, I would uh, ask him to come here. <laughs> so uh, Ronak Bhai uh, is, is the one who uh, helps in uh, all this thing. The, the backbone of uh, the entire uh, system is Ronak Bhai. Thanks a lot, uh, Ronak Bhai. Uh, uh, there are many people who can do the work, uh, tools we can have, we can connect the things, we can run the show. But as I told that, when suddenly problem emerges, how to solve it out? Uh, that is uh, the, the, the thing that normally we do not find good people uh, to see that. And he is one such person who can uh, visualize all the possible problems that might happen, keeps the backup plan ready for all those things also, so that if it happens, people are ready. People are also ready. Tools are also ready to solve it out there. So thanks a lot huh, to uh, uh, Ronak for this. And we all learn a lot many things from technical people huh, that how we have to plan uh, A, B, C, D kind of things also there. Uh, uh, finally, uh, we are also thankful to all the online participants. Uh, uh, we were happy to see that good number of uh, uh, responses we got from so many states of uh, India, around 15 states of India uh, 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 participants have joined. And uh, it is good to see that they, they keep uh, a faith uh, in the quality of seminars and they register during webinar time. Also, we have seen that so many people from so many states uh, were joining uh, our seminars. Uh, this time, uh, it was rather challenging to see that we will get a very good response from uh, so many other states. Because normally what happens is that there is paper reading uh, sessions and people come to read paper.
because that certificate is very valuable to many teachers and research scholars. This time we have not gone for uh, any of those kinds of perks for which people come. So this was only attending, only those who are eager to know something on this convergence of AI, DH and English studies, they only participate uh, here. So the, in, even in this case, uh, from 15 states, we got a good response. So all the online uh, attendees, uh, uh, they were quite active also. They were keeping live chat on YouTube live stream also. So thanks a lot to all the online attendees also. So with this note, I'm thankful to the university authorities also for giving us grant and the permission to uh, have this seminar. And everybody, uh, those who are here, uh, uh, a big thanks to all of you. Without you, this won't be uh, uh, successful. We'll give a pat to yourself for the success of this seminar. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, a team cannot work if they don't have a proper mentor to guide. So I would like to thank our lighthouse, Dr. Dilip Bharat, under whose guidance we all were able to do this seminar very successfully. Now, uh, let us all embark on our academic journey with this renewed inspiration and enriching knowledge. Hope to see you all soon again in future with such academic ventures. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Now, uh, let us all gather at the external building for high tea. Safe journey, everyone. Thank you.